Hello and welcome to this video on making trees with mTree. If you've been following along with my blog, Instagram, or Facebook over the past few weeks, you'll notice I've been posting a lot of pictures of trees. Some of you have been asking how I do that uh, and asking me to post a video showing the process. In an effort to show that process, I've decided to make this video that you're watching now. If you don't know, mTree is an add-on for Blender that allows you to make trees in a non-destructive procedural manner using nodes. When I first read about it and saw the results people were getting, it looked like something that would be rather complicated because, as you know, making shaders in the shader editor with nodes can get quite complex. This is not very complex at all. There are maybe seven nodes you can use. Each one does have a lot of parameters on it, but there aren't many that actually matter in most cases. So let's jump into the process and see how it's done. Let's start with my scene set up here. I've split the screen into the 3D viewport and the mTree node tree. In order to get that drop down, you need to ins have installed the mTree add-on. So let's start with uh, the first nodes uh, will create an, uh, an mTree node tree. Hit Shift A and start with a trunk node. You must start with a trunk node. And let's add a tree parameters node. This is like your uh, material output node, basically. Nothing plugs into it, uh, but everything you set up in the nodes does output here. So if we hit create tree, it is just, just, it looks like a vine. So what we can do is add a branch node. And let's hit auto update so we don't have to hit update every time. But already you have a tree that um, you could use the sapling add-on to create this, perhaps. However, once you click off of it, after making it with sapling, you're stuck with whatever you have. Uh, in our case here, we can change the length, which is essentially the height of the tree. Uh, so let's make that 20, make it a little shorter. Uh, let's make the base or the trunk a little wider. Increase the randomness a little bit. Makes it a little curvier. And let's change the radius of our branches down a little bit. And change the, spit <laughs> the split probability a little more. You'll get more splits. And their length will increase a little bit. Just like that, we have kind of a decent looking tree. Uh, you'll notice that our output node over here says preview. Let's switch it to final, create tree again, and it's a much higher resolution. This number is the amount of vertices around the base of the trunk. 12 is perfectly fine. And we could play around with this a whole lot more, but I'm just showing the basic process. So Let's uh, create leaves, or leafs as it says. <laughs> um, here you'll, you'll choose your leaf object. You can make your own, or there is a node for twigs. Now let's say execute. And here we have a twig already, and it's already got materials. Um, so there's nothing that we need to do in that regard. And they're decent. But let's select that with the eyedropper. Auto update is turned off. And like that, we already have a decent looking leaf layout, say 4,000 leaves, and let's make them a little bigger. This is actually influencing a particle system. 
uh, that is parented to the trunk object. Now I've already created a uh, trunk material that I'm going to apply. The, the page for the add-on says that there are um, procedural materials included. That has not been my experience. I have not found any procedural materials included. Uh, however, everything does UV unwrap correctly to just use any PBR material. So if we go here to look dev mode, you'll see the materials I put on here. Let's go to front view, add a sun. Change some parameters to make it look cool. <laughs> I've already done this a few times, that's why I already know what parameters I'm setting. And let's go to rendered view. And that already looks pretty good. But you can play around with all these parameters. Um, another cool one to add on here before we wrap this up is the growth node. This will add very small, slender growth off the end of these branches that already exist. Or the grow node. Add that. Haha. -ha. So you can get some pretty realistic looking, looking trees. Uh, you can increase the split probability for this as well. Uh, so the parameters that I've found on each node that I like to play with are the split probability, the radius, and the randomness. Randomness just adds more kinks to the curves. Uh, but this is enough to just get a decent tree. Now you'll notice this; these leaves hit the bottom there is something called floor avoidance. We can increase that a little bit. I'm holding shift so I'm not moving it a whole lot at once. There we go. Now your your mesh won't uh, interfere with the floor mesh. And that is pretty much all you need to make a really cool tree. Let's add a camera and let's make a render. If I can type correctly. there it is. Not too bad for a few minutes of work and no modeling whatsoever. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, and check out my links below for Instagram, my blog, Facebook, and any other platforms that I am on. MeWe is a new one. I'm on there as well. Uh, until next time, happy blendering!